This video is an introduction to water chemistry. This is a very important skill to understand concrete and tons of other things. My name is Tyler Lay and I'm kind of crazy for concrete. Water. It's the most used commodity on the planet. It's everywhere. It's essential. We need it to live. We also need it to make concrete, but it's also really important in how concrete deteriorates or falls apart. But most reactions on the earth and in concrete involve water. And when things are mixed into water, this is called an aqueous solution. And these aqueous solutions are really important to understand. They are water plus stuff. Pretty complicated, right? The water is called the solvent and the stuff is called the solute. This could be a solid, this could be gas, this could be a liquid. A lot of my examples today are gonna be with solids. They can apply to anything though. This could also be done with a gas, also could be done with a liquid. These materials become mixed at a very intimate level, at a very, very, very close to one another. These can be atoms, molecules, or ions. It really depends on the situation. So why is water so good at this? This is what water looks like on an extremely small scale, at least idealized. It's got a negative oxygen on one side and it's got two hydrogens that are H pluses on the other side. It's got these very loose bonds. It can move around and, and change. It's extremely flexible. And because of this unbalanced charge, the water molecules can pull on other compounds. And this unbalanced charge, it's also called a polar molecule. When you have billions of all of these water molecules pulling in one direction, you can make huge forces. When they get together, they're like the angry mob. Water molecules are kind of crazy stuff. They will rip apart molecules or they'll take molecules that are ordered and they'll break them up or sometimes they'll do nothing at all if things are well ordered and put together right. And this process is really determined by how tightly the molecules are bound together. And it also depends on their structure and it also depends on the charge. So it's kind of complicated. Let's start out with something that's simple. Let's start out with salt. Salt is just sodium chloride, NaCl, Na plus, Cl minus. It's ordered in a cube structure that looks something like this. You got your sodiums, your chlorides, your sodium and chlorides. Everything's balanced. Everything is great. Salt is happy when it is a solid. Now, if we're gonna take our eye though and look at it, instead of looking at it in 3D, if we just look at it in 2D, we would see our sodiums would look like this, our chlorides would look like this. It looks something like this. Now, if we take our salt and we throw it in some water, it's going to look like this. So this is the container. This is all filled with water. This is the salt. There's the sodium, there's the chlorides. And these little bitty Mickey Mouse looking things, these are the water molecules. H plus on one side, O2 on the other. Plus on one side, minus on the other side. So here we go. We got our Na plus here and what happens? We got our minus charge or a minus charge or a minus charge and they're like, oh, they're hugging it. They're like grabbing it. They're like, mm, I want it. I want it for myself. And then on the other side, we have our plus side. This is overall plus, overall plus, 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 plus. It goes around the chloride and it's grabbing. I want this, I want this, I want this. It's like these screaming children, right? Pulling this thing apart. So water is attracted to the sodium and chloride and it actually pulls the salt apart, pulls them into the different ions. The sodium and the chloride are now in between the water molecules. They're swimming. Ooh. Ooh, swimming amongst the water molecules. And the solid appears to disappear. You can't see it anymore. It appears to dissolve. What that really means though, is that it's intermittently mixed. And these individual ions are so small, they are smaller than the wavelength of visible light. We can't see it anymore. Okay, they're just, they're just tiny, teeny tiny, but they're still there. And every one of these chlorides or sodiums are now surrounded. This is again, plus, 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 all oh, it's hugging. It's like, oh, mine, mine. And these are all, oh, negative, negative, negative. No, mine, mine, don't come near me, mine. 
right? And they all do that in these different parts and they swim and move them to the different parts of the container. And this process is called hydrolysis. This is also called dissolving. And although I've shown it with salt, the same phenomenon, the same process can happen with liquids. It can also happen with gases, or it may not break these up in the individual ions. They may just be their own molecules. They just separate them. They just break them apart. That's also possible. So I know if you're like me, you said, where does the salt go? Well, I, I don't see it anymore. Where, where does it go? Well, the salt, at least the ions, are still there. They're just intermittently mixed so well we can't see them anymore. But how do we know it's still there? How do we know it didn't go someplace else? Well, we could drink the water and you can taste it on your tongue. Your tongue is extremely sensitive. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's different. I taste something different. Well, we could also evaporate the water out boil all the water off, and at the very, very bottom, we would have a salt crystal, a perfect, perfect salt crystal that's down there. But we could also add something else to the water, and the salt could actually react with it. It may form some other product, and this is a huge deal. When things are intermittently mixed together, it's much easier to get them to react, and that is why water is such a big deal. It breaks things down. It makes them easier to mingle or mix. And then other reactions can form. And then they may stay within the water or they may fall out and be solids. So what happens if we keep adding salt? Well, we could keep pouring salt in, keep adding it again and again and again and again. And eventually the water can't hold anymore. The water molecules, they just can't hold any more salt. And this is called saturation. And this is when you start to see salt start to form at the bottom. My old roommate in college, he would add so much sugar to his tea. His literally, he knew he was done adding sugar when there was a layer of sugar at the bottom of the tea. And then he would mix it, mix it, mix it. Because what's mixing do? What's it do? Well, it mixes up any localized concentrations you might have, and it makes it more uniform. It makes it so more of these sugars can be ripped apart and go into solution and make his tea taste extra sweet. This whole process is impacted by the type of material being added, the temperature, and tons of other stuff. Remember, this can also happen with gases and liquids. It doesn't just have to be about these solids that we add. All of this that I'm talking about can be explained with chemical thermodynamics and the Gibbs free energy equation. I know there's some of you out there that just like math and they want to see how this is explained. And this is the tip of the iceberg of what's going on. Gibbs free energy says that there's a, this equation, delta G equals delta H minus T times delta S. And this is true for a constant temperature and pressure. And delta H is what's called the enthalpy. And it's how much heat is either given off or taken up by the reaction. That's whether it's either exothermic or endothermic. T is your absolute temperature, usually expressed in Kelvin of the temperature when the reaction starts to happen. Delta S is the entropy. It's the amount of disorder or order, the change in order of the system caused by the reaction. If this is kind of confusing to you, you can look up a delta H and a delta S for all kinds of different possible reactions. So then if you just know the T, you can just solve the equation. Now in this equation, if delta G is negative, then the phenomenon you're talking about will happen. So when you see a reaction, when you see salt being added to water, yep, when it goes away, what do you know? Delta G is negative, baby. It's, it's negative, it's going away, it's going away. But then when you keep adding enough salt, you keep adding enough salt that it doesn't happen anymore. You've changed this delta H and delta S enough that delta G will, will become positive. And that means the phenomenon will not happen. That means the salt will sit in the bottom of the container. That's delta G is positive. When you see it, I want you to say that delta G is positive. And if delta G is zero, 
That means the reaction's in equilibrium. It means it reacts, it doesn't, it reacts, it doesn't, it's in equilibrium, it's right in the middle. Hey, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment below. Did I teach you something new today about water? I hope so, I'm trying. Take care, bye.